Welcome back to A320 Knowledge, your trusted source for Airbus expertise. Today, we'll be diving into the SEC flight control computers. In today's tutorial, we'll explore the following. The role and functions of the SECs in managing flight control surfaces. Inputs received by the SECs from critical aircraft systems. Redundancy and fault management within the SEC system. The A320 is equipped with seven flight control computers, which process pilot and autopilot inputs according to normal, alternate, and direct flight control laws. The A320 has three SECs, which are integral components of the aircraft's fly-by-wire system. These computers play a critical role in managing the aircraft's flight control surfaces, specifically the spoilers and elevators. The SECs serve as the primary computers for spoiler control and backup computers for the elevator and trimmable horizontal stabilizer pitch control. Notably, SEC 3 does not serve as a backup for elevator and THS control, distinguishing it from the other SECs in the system. The SECs receive and process inputs from a variety of sources. These inputs include data from the Air Data Inertial Reference System, which provides essential flight parameters such as airspeed, altitude, and aircraft attitude. The SLAT flap control computers contribute information regarding the positions and operations of the slats and flaps. The Landing Gear Control Interface Unit supplies data about the status and positioning of the landing gear. Additionally, the SECs utilize inputs from the radio altimeters, which measure the aircraft's altitude above the ground, and accelerometers, which detect changes in the aircraft's velocity and orientation. Two flight control data concentrators acquire data from the SECs and send it to the electronic instrument system and the centralized fault display system to be displayed to the pilots. Along with the ELACs, the SECs limit what the autopilot can order and are also responsible for sending precise signals to the hydraulic actuators on their flight control surfaces. The SECs are allocated specific responsibilities for managing spoilers across the wings. SEC 1 oversees spoilers 3 and 4, SEC 2 handles spoilers 5, and SEC 3 manages spoilers 1 and 2. The SECs serve as a backup for processing all of the side stick commands in the case of an ELAC 1 plus 2 fault. The system also shifts the entire pitch control to either SEC 1 or SEC 2, depending on the status of the associated circuits. Control shifts to SEC 2 when the left elevator is supplied by the green system and the right elevator is supplied by the yellow system. Whilst control shifts to SEC 1 when both left and right elevator are supplied by the blue system. If a single elevator fails, independently of other failures, the SECs take control of the elevators over the ELACs in alternate law. The operation of the autobrake function relies on the availability of at least two operative SECs. This requirement stems from the fact that autobrake activation is tied to the deployment of the ground spoilers. Similarly, the deployment of reverse thrust is contingent upon receiving the thrust lever angle signal from at least one SEC. Therefore, for the reversers to function, at least one SEC must be operational. If none of the SECs are operational, the aircraft will be unable to utilize reverse thrust capability. These dependencies underscore the critical role of SECs in facilitating essential braking and thrust management functions during the landing phase. The SECs play a crucial role in monitoring the flight control system for any faults or abnormal conditions. They continuously check the system's sensors, actuators, and other components for proper functioning and alerts the pilots in case of any failures. In the event of a SEC malfunction, the ECAM procedure instructs the crew to first attempt to reset the affected SEC by turning it off and then on. If this reset attempt fails to restore functionality, the SEC is switched off to prevent any potential erroneous inputs that could affect the flight controls. 
Unlike failures in the ELACs and fax systems, which prompt backup computers to assume control, a SEC failure results in the loss of control over the associated spoilers. In the event of a SEC failure, the spoilers it governs are automatically retracted to prevent potential flight control issues. Additionally, if both SEC 1 and SEC 3 experience faults simultaneously, the extension of speed brakes is inhibited. Specific consequences arise depending on which SEC is affected. If SEC 1 fails, the ECAM advises against using the speed brake and indicates that the VLS minimum selectable airspeed will not be updated or corrected. For aircraft equipped with load alleviation function, the loss of SEC 1 or SEC 2 results in the inability to perform load alleviation tasks, which are critical for optimizing aerodynamic performance and stability during flight. Moreover, a DC bus 2 fault results in the simultaneous loss of both SEC 2 and SEC 3, leaving a lack of flight control redundancy and degraded braking ability. If all three SEC computers fail or are switched off, the aircraft transitions from normal law to alternate law, resulting in the loss of flight protections. In alternate law, all spoilers become inactive and roll control is solely managed by the ailerons. During approach and landing configurations, specific changes occur. In a normal alternate law approach, upon selecting landing gear down, the aircraft switches to direct law. However, with this failure, if flaps two is selected without the autopilot engaged, direct law is activated at that moment. If the autopilot is engaged, direct law activation occurs upon autopilot disconnection. This adjustment is influenced by the fact that the LGCIU information can no longer be sent to the ELAC system with the loss of SECs 1, 2, and 3. Pilots must consider these operational changes during the approach briefing to help avoid startle. Thanks for tuning into this tutorial on the SEC flight control computers.